Hello YouTube friends, welcome back. If you're just joining us, this is Dread Skates. I am your number one hub hater and host, Scott Dread, here to guide you through the wonderful and wacky world of electric skateboarding. All right, so what are we what have we got on the bench today? So this is a bit of a unicorn, and I mean that both figuratively and kind of literally, because this board is both beautiful and rare. How rare? There are more reviews of the Baja board Pantera and other derivatives on YouTube right now than there are of this board. And I'm not even going to, you know, give it away too much because you can see in the title, you know, what we're talking about. And what we're talking about is the Hoyt Street EL1. And there's just so much about this board that I feel like I'm going to miss in the details. So understand before we get into this, it really is that fantastic. If there was an orchestra of Eastgate, the EL1 would be the strings. And we're going to talk about it right after this intro. Roll that beautiful bean footage. know how this goes. I talk, there's a lot of uncomfortable time spent with my feet, and hopefully by the end of it you walk away a little more informed. Uh, before we get started this week, I just wanted to give a huge thank you to all of my subscribers, both new and old. We just passed over the 100 mark while shooting this video, and your support is what gives me the motivation to keep making these, so thank you again. If you have any suggestions or just want to give a shout out, uh, please let me know down in the comments. All right, let's get started. Base price clocks in at around $2,000 or $1,999 if you want to be real specific about it. And it can go up to $2,200 depending on the options. Uh, that is specifically for the custom version that they sell where you can have your the map of your town or city uh, etched into the board underneath the clear grip, which is pretty cool. This has a projected top speed of 25 to 28 miles per hour. It's a 38 inch solid bamboo deck. Uh, I believe there may be some sort of semi-rigid core in the middle there, but they don't really specify. Weighs about 20 pounds. The motors were designed and initially manufactured in the US. They are custom made 180 kV, 2200 watt, 80 amp motors that were designed specifically for Hoyt. It comes with a 4 amp 3 pin charger, that is the 3 prong style charger, not the single barrel jack that you see on a lot of the other boards, like the boosted. The stock gearing included with the board is a 38 to 15T configuration, and every board comes with the included travel bag, which is essentially kind of like a backpack that also holds the batteries. And all. So, Let's talk about some of the things that make this board rather unique, and that's starting with perhaps what's probably one of the more like super polarizing features of this board, at least when I talk to other people about it, and that's the remote. Now, I know what you're saying, but before you start heading to the exit, bear with me here, because this is probably one of the most brilliant pieces of kit that Hoyt actually sells, and you can buy this remote separately. Uh, the DIY community swears by it. It uses their own proprietary 2.4 gigahertz channel jumping technology, channel hopping technology. 
to achieve essentially a 100% connectivity rate. And what does that mean? Well, in layman terms, it's whenever one uh, channel band is getting real busy, the remote will be like, oh, I'm gonna go over here. And so instead of losing that connection temporarily, it'll just jump to the next channel and your remote won't cut out on you or stall while you're writing. This has their own, the casing itself is super robust and honestly, if you spend a couple hours playing around with it, uh, I think you'll find that you get used to the f rather unique ergonomics pretty quickly. Um, if you're coming from a background in downhill longboarding, this will be really intuitive to see because I believe the initial design of the puck was built around that kind of hand feel of riding with a slide puck in your grip. And so that to me was pretty moving on from there let's talk about the top speed because i wasn't really able to push it much past 26 miles an hour uh, i was hitting about 25 26 consistently and i think that's pretty reasonable like uh, this is going to be mostly dictated by your ride style and uh, rider weight height you know any number of things i think on a good day this will definitely do 28 you know no wind on nice flat land. Uh, it's definitely got the torque and power for that, but I don't, in my own experience, I wasn't getting that, so I don't want to overrepresent that. It's also possible that you could swap out the stock gearing from that uh, 15T to something like an 18T and get a little bit more headroom in that top speed uh, by sacrificing a little bit of torque. I'm not going to officially recommend that, but that is something you can do, and I don't know how that affects their uh, stock warranty, so definitely might want to reach out to them in advance and see if they'll be willing to swap out the stock uh, gears for you, because one of the best parts about Hoyt is that they are a very cons uh, customer-based company, and they'll work with you on a lot of like the little detail customization options, so that might not be out of the realm of possibility. So something else to go. It's a quick 26 and you will get up there real easily. Uh, it doesn't feel shaky, it doesn't feel wobbly, and that's due in part to the stiff deck and bushing combinations that they have. But one of the things that I like to hammer on here is that there's a big difference between being able to hit a top speed and being able to maintain that top speed. It's like, yes, my to my almost $3,000 super high-end uh, performance board can hit 38, but it doesn't want to stay at 38. It wants to stay at 30 or 35. The Hoyt, I can hold it at 25, 26 and just pin the throttle down and it'll go all day. So that's the main difference between this and something like a budget board or something like the boosted stealth and that like you start pushing it up there and it starts getting a little dodgy like if you don't have everything like perfectly dialed in. The Hoyt does not experience any of those shortcomings. It is a remarkably stable board and the fact that it's able to pull this off on 97mm urethane wheels on stock caliber trucks is kind of amazing. Uh, I. I don't want to gush too much more about that, but it was super surprising just like how, like compared to some of the other more expensive boards that I have and how like responsive and stable this ride was compared to some of those boards. <laughs> so let's move on to something that's a little bit of a sour note. That's the range. So I tried, I really did try. The max I was getting per charge was about 10 miles and that really wasn't a huge shocker to me because that's what their own calculator said I would be getting. And that's really the only drawback here. While for most people, this is probably perfectly fine. Like if you're looking for a board for just like a local short commute or a real last mile solution and you only have about five to 10 miles to cover, you'll be solid. However, it is now 2020 and we have very competitive budget brand players who are putting up, you know, at minimum 14 to 19 miles on average for boards that are in a significantly lower price point. So that being said, my real piece of feedback here for the Hoyt team is that it would be nice to see them offer an alternative option from that flight safe uh, battery configuration that we're going to talk about in a second here 
for something a little more robust like a 10s 4p or 10s 5p non hot swappable configuration that will offer a little bit more range for those folks who are looking to take this on group rides or have a slightly longer commute or just like going on solo touring rides that are a bit more lengthy because the sport is advancing like we're going farther on these and i was really bummed that i wasn't able to ride the board for longer and there were a couple of times where the range anxiety started to kick in so other than that though like i do like the fact that they are really one of the only games in town that is offering a flight safe solution like this the fact that Everything is designed around this easily removable individual cell pack system. So what it is is the individual P groups, uh, that's the cells inside the board, you can pull out. And those are all 90 watts each, which comes out to meet most of the requirements for TSA and most airlines uh, minimum flight safe requirements if you want to travel with the board. That makes going anywhere with this or flying anywhere with this board like 99% easier than 100% of everything else on the market, with the exception of maybe a handful of other boards. Uh, but those options, you won't get the kind of performance that you're getting out of the Hoyt, so that is something to consider. I am really surprised that no other manufacturers are doing this, but seeing as the range limiting factor here versus the cost, I can kind of see maybe why. And again, that's why I say it would be nice to see if they had both the flight safe, op safe option and a larger pack. Moving on from there, ride feel of this board is, I don't want to say unique, but it, it's its definitely special. And I don't even know if ride feel is like a it's legit term when you said people say mouth feel, you know, you get the douche chills. But what makes a board successful is how it feels under your feet. Like if it feels like you're standing on a wobbly plank of cedar, like you're, that's not going to be enjoyable. That's not going to be a good experience. Uh, this board, despite being made of bamboo laminate, there is there's basically no flex to the deck whatsoever. But that gives it a really sturdy feel. And initially, I thought that was stiff. But after riding around for a little while, I'm gonna dial that back to firm. Like what I say is like it's not like you're stepping on a hardwood floor. It's like you're stepping onto like a like a springy bench kind of like there's a little bit of give. Hello folks, welcome back. I know y'all like hill tests, so we're out here in glorious somewhere San Francisco to find one. I have no idea how the audio is gonna turn out on this, so we'll see how it goes. So let's take a quick break and go find a hill. Hey folks, well looks like we found the street. So we're about to run up that thing. And in case you're curious, I've actually referenced this before. This is Mississippi Street, and this is about a 20, 21% grade. So should be a fair bit of a challenge here. This is by no means the most aggressive hill in SF, but hey, maybe if, if I get a thousand subs, we'll do Lombard. All right, let's hit it. Here we go. And we made it. So I'm gonna include the speedometer down in the corner here since now we're shooting on the GoPro. So hopefully that'll provide a little bit better frame of reference for how well or how bad we did there. Uh, gorgeous out today. 
and in case you're wondering why there's not a video of me going back down this thing well i just charged this board to full because this is the second time shooting this so i'm uh, not really gonna test the uh the brakes on this one on a full battery so next time folks but not like flex and it's nice and wide and very comfortable. There's a subtle concave to it that's rather pleasant and allows my rather prodigious feet to kind of wander into the corners and push the board with relative ease. And that's something I found rather challenging with other boards. Usually when there's a concave, like my, at the very least, my toes will start to poke out at kind of odd angles over the side. And I find the edges start to kind of dig into my soles a little bit when I really start moving around if I'm not real careful with my footwork. So that I don't experience on the EL1. And I mentioned earlier the bushings feeling rather stiff. And I think that is definitely accurate. This board does not carve very well. It banks into kind of like shallow turns, but also somehow still, like you don't lose any turning radius from it. It turns about as well as you would expect a normal long board to respond. And when you're really pinning the throttle down, I find that extra resistance a very reassuring when you're starting to hit those higher speeds. It feels very stable and very uh, safe and comfortable when you're starting to lay the hammer down. Uh, so overall, if I had to put a number to this, like it would definitely get a nine out of 10. Like I think there, there's definitely a little bit of wiggle room in there that there is some, you know, like it's again, like I'm not the biggest fan of concave boards, but I think this is probably the best example of what you can do with that style of deck and combined with everything else that they've kind of sunk into this, it just felt buttery smooth. Actually, I want to dunk a last little piece in here that I keep forgetting to mention and that is the motor mounts. Uh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention these because they are custom machined, also in Oregon. And they are remarkable. You can buy these things separately, so if you're looking for a DIY project uh, kit, check them out. They fit on the Caliber 2 style trucks, and they are precision CNC machined and self-tensioning. Why nobody else is doing self-tensioning motor mounts, again, is beyond me. It's like the, it's like the travel safe battery solution. I really want to see more of that. Like, and they look absolutely gorgeous when paired with the motors. And as a matter of fact, you can buy the whole drive train separately. Let's put a big bow on. Would I recommend the EL1? Yes. I do also understand that that range right now is going to be a limiting factor for some. We're in the age of group ride, of you know, like 20 or 30 mile group rides, big speed, lots of performance, and I think the EL1 has got plenty of performance. I just wish there was a bigger gas tank on the thing. Uh, but that's really the only problem I have with it. Like, I think the best description I could come up with with this thing is technical execution. It is perfect technical execution. But when you talk about in the sense of something, you know, like food, it's like, yes, you can create the perfect dish exactly one to one as it is supposed to be. But you lose a little something if you are always focused on the details. And I think it's so much to a fault in some ways with this board, but not to the point of completely discounting it. And honestly, at the price point that it's at, it's not, it borders right up against a slightly more range capable option, but it is still much more approachable to the average consumer who maybe before this was looking at a boosted board because I don't want this to sound like a detriment, but this is probably, this is like the Lexus to the Boosted's Civic. This is what, this is what you imagine the board you're getting should actually be. And so in that, yes, I, I do recommend this. Uh, it's about the price of a Stealth plus an extended range battery, so it's really not that big of an ask on price. And it's US made. Uh, Right now, you might have a little bit of trouble getting this outside of the US and Canada. I believe they were saying that they were having some trouble shipping these internationally. So that might also be something to consider. 
but if you're looking for just a good solid uh, nine to five commuter board that won't go out on you that is locally made has a dynamite like solid warranty and a service program and easily uh, serviceable part I can't recommend the EL one enough so as always hope you learned something uh, again Please don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.